Hi guys, so today I'll be discussing about circulatory system. This system consists of the heart, series of blood vessels, and the blood that flows through them. The function of this system is to pump blood and transport of nutrients, oxygen, and hormones to cells throughout the body and removal of metabolic waste. Some of the facts that you need to know about the heart is that it's located in the center of your body, but it's a bit to the left. It's a hollow structure and composed almost entirely muscle. Moreover, it's the size of your clenched fist and enclosed in a protective sac called the pericardium. The pericardium serves as a protection of your heart. It's also made up of special cells called cardiac muscle cells. In addition, the right and the left sides of the heart are separated by a septum or wall. The septum prevents the mixing of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. On each side of the septum are two chambers. The structure of the heart includes right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, aorta, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, mitral valve, aortic valve, pulmonary valve, tricuspid valve. The function of atrium is to receive blood and transfer it to the other tissues. The walls of atrium are thin because it does not need much power to transport the blood and it only lets blood flow, so it doesn't have to pump the blood like ventricles. Now for the function of the ventricles is to pump blood to all parts of the body and lungs and the walls of ventricles are thick because blood is pumped at greater pressure compared to atrium. The right ventricle wall is less thick than the left ventricle because the left ventricle has to pump the blood to the rest of the body. Arteries have very thick, strong, elastic walls. They need to be strong because they have to withstand the strong forces as the heart pumps blood through them. And they carry blood away from the heart. Now this one is called the capillaries. Capillaries are known as very tiny. They have thin walls made up of only one layer of cells. This means that the substances in the blood, such as oxygen and sugar, can easily get out. It is used to supply cells with things that they need and take away their waste products. It connects the arteries to the veins too. Now this one is called the veins. The veins are a similar size to arteries. However, their walls are much thinner and the space inside them is larger. Veins do not take thick do not need thick walls or elastic walls either. And veins contains valves which only let the blood flow one way towards the heart. Now let's discuss about plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Okay, so for the plasma is actually inside the blood and it's straw colored 90% water, 10% of dissolved gases, salts, nutrients, enzymes, hormones, waste, and proteins. As you can see here, most of the cells in the blood are red blood cells. They contain a red pigment called hemoglobin. When the oxygen combines to the hemoglobin inside the red blood cells, it becomes oxyhemoglobin. And it's the most numerous type in a transport oxygen. It's this shaped and made in red bone marrow. And it circulates for 120 days. Now this one is called the white blood cells. White blood cells are larger than red blood cells and they always have a nucleus. They produce molecules called antibodies and they fight parasites and attack bacteria. The number of white blood cells increases when the body is fighting. Lymphocytes produce antibodies which fight pathogens. Now this one is called the platelets. They aid the body in clothing and they are small fragments. They stick to edges of broken blood cell and secrete clothing factor to help form clot. So when you're bleeding, the platelets will help to stop the bleeding. Now let's yeah. start off with circulation of blood. So from different body parts to the oxygenated blood, it's collected to the heart and enters the right atrium through blood vessels called superior and inferior vena cava. The deoxygenated blood now moves into the right ventricle. The deoxygenated blood now moves into the right ventricle. In order to purify the blood, it is sent to the lungs via pulmonary artery. In the lungs, the blood is purified to remove the carbon dioxide and add the oxygen. After being purified, the oxygenated blood is sent back to the heart, to pulmonary vein and to the left atrium and flows to the left ventricle. 
Finally, through the aorta, it leaves the heart and sends to the body. The oxygen of blood is delivered to every cell. Then, it repeats. Thank you for watching and listening to this video. Have a good day.